Good morning. Uh, today we're going to get a little bit of an introduction in terms of uh, what the heck this course is about. Uh, this course is about um, probability, and probability is one particular branch of mathematics. Um, in this branch of mathematics, we're studying things uh, which have no definite outcome. So for example, rolling dice, uh, whether it's going to rain um, today or whether you're going to pass this class. Of course, you're going to pass the class. Don't worry about that. Um, to get there, uh, the first couple of lectures, we're going to be um, introducing uh, the language um, around probability. Um, if you've just taken up through calculus, then you probably feel like all math is pretty similar. Um, once you get past calculus, though, you'll see that uh, the mathematics can branch out pretty quickly in terms of the vocabulary that's used um, and the uh, world that you're exploring. So um, again, probability is a branch of mathematics dealing with uh, random events. So this class is dealing in random events. Um, no predetermined uh, outcome. Uh, so some examples of this, as I mentioned already, would be uh, if you're uh, going to roll some dice. Um, if you're going to play the stock market, that would be another example. Um, anything that uh, you don't um, have a definitive outcome of uh, once you uh, follow a particular process. So in this first part of the course, we're going to be studying this. We're going to be developing some theory uh, so that we can better understand it. And then towards the end of the course, um, this is the probability part, we're going to then dive into statistics. And just a little bit of an introduction. Maybe diving is a bit of a... Uh, um, Scary word there, just that we're going to get our toes wet with statistics. And statistics is related to probability um, in terms of what we're going to use is we're going to use our understanding of randomness to study a subset of a population to try to infer something about the entire population. So as an example, if you think about polls, uh, you're randomly selecting some subset of Americans or uh, some other uh, population, and you're using that subset to try to infer something about the entire population. Well, there's actually mathematics behind that. They're not just um, arbitrarily saying, oh yeah, 80% of Americans uh, prefer cucumbers over cabbage because we just think that's true. There's, there's some high-powered math behind that, and that high-powered math comes from the probability side of things. So let's start uh, now with some uh, definitions. So we can um, have a, a common set of language that we can use in thinking about probability. So the first definition that I want to talk about is um, a random experiment. Um, and this is just a procedure with no definite So again, uh, the dice example, um, you can flip a coin, um, you might get heads, you might get tails, you're not going to know until you actually do it. So once we have a random experiment, we can list the possible outcomes. Um, and in doing so, we get what's called a sample space. So um, the sample space is just the list of possible Um, it's also called the outcome space. And it's typically denoted, and we'll use this uh, uh, letter in this course, it's typically denoted by the letter S. So that would be um, an outcome space. All right, so um, as an example with this uh, coin that we were talking about, so if I flip a coin, so I flip a coin, here's my random experiment, and I note the outcome. So the sample space here is just the set heads and tails. So one thing that I want to point out in this class, again, especially if you're coming just from calculus, um, and probably uh, at least half of you are, 
is that the language in this course is uh, going to be a lot with sets. So a set is just a collection of things, and what we're going to do is we're going to um, count um, uh, um, some subset of this um, to help us determine probabilities. So just as an example, the probability of heads, you know, before, without even taking this class, you probably know that the probability of heads is one out of two. So how'd you do that? Well, you found this set in your mind, you counted the total number of outcomes, counted the number of ways you can get heads, and um, took the number of heads, uh, ways you can get heads, which is just one, divided by the total um, size of the sample space, and you got one out of two. Okay, so that's one example. And what I want to do now is just give you um, other flavors of sample spaces. So um, as an example, um, let's say you pick a random number between 0 and 1. So um, in this case, uh, we can rank the sample space um, as all the x's, all the x's such that um, x is between 0 and 1. So you could have just written, um, you also could have just written this to denote that, but um, as you're getting into um, higher level math classes, this notation is going to pop up more and more. So um, again, this is read as all of the x's such that, or with the property that, x is between 0 and 1. So looking at this guy and looking at this guy, they have a little bit of a different flavor to them. Um, just start thinking about, well, how are they different? And we'll uh, talk a little bit more about that in a second. Uh, as another example with another flavor, let's say you um, sit in a field and you count the number of minutes until a plane flies overhead. So let's say we're counting just whole minutes, um, and, and how uh, if that's the case, and let's say we round down to the nearest minute. Um, well, in this case, my um, outcome space might look like um, 0, 1, 2, comma, dot, dot, dot. So, I mean, in theory, this could go on forever. I know, I know what you're thinking. Well, planes are not going to be around in 50 years, or you're going to be dead in 50 years or whatever. But um, math class, let's just, um, uh, theoretically, we can go on forever. All right. And uh, I guess I want to talk about now the um, uh, differences between some of these guys. Um, well, let's see. This guy here, this guy here is an example of a finite sample space. So um, I can articulate um, uh, all of the discrete um, values in there. Um, this guy is continuous. That could be um, one way to describe it. Uh, think about that from calculus, a continuous um, interval. Um, it's also infinite. We've got an infinite number of points in there. Right? Infinite number of points between 0 and 1. Um, this one's interesting. Uh, this one we could say is also infinite. It's infinite in a different sort of way. Um, here I can actually count out um, all of the values. I don't have to go on forever and ever and ever, but we could say that this is infinite and um, countable. And this guy's also similar to this in that it's discrete. So this one is discrete, and discrete is uh, when it's not continuous. So let me just um, say why I'm making a big deal out of these guys in terms of their differences. Well, later on, we're going to use functions to describe probabilistic events. Um, and in doing so, we're actually going to demarcate between discrete sample spaces, that's going to be uh, one world, and then continuous sample spaces, that's going to be a different world. Um, just uh, not to cut out of the bag, but um, these discrete ones are going to involve summation. We'll see how. And the continuous ones will involve the um, continuous analog, which is um, integration. 
Um, let me also say, though, that uh, here is a finite sum, and here is an infinite sum. So there'll be a little bit uh, of a different flavor between those guys. All right, so uh, now that we have a, a sense as to uh, what a sample space is, I want to start digging in a little bit deeper in terms of uh, different ways that we can think about probability. So um, there are really two main ways that you can think about probability. Um, there's the classical approach. Um, and then there's the relative frequency approach. So again, right now we're just kind of trying to think more about what the heck probability even uh, means. Um, in the class, uh, classical approach, what you're going to do is you're just going to count the number of ways your event can occur. And you're going to divide by the total number of outcomes. Um, so let's see. Uh, as an example, um, if I want to know the probability of uh, getting a 3, if I roll a die, that's just going to be 1 out of 6. So I'm just counting. Um, in the relative frequency approach, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, something a little bit more experimental. I'm going to repeat the process over and over and over again, and I'm going to see what my um, ratio gets closer and closer to. So uh, to illustrate that further, let's call this uh, experimental. So let's say this is uh, my number of um, rolls. So I keep rolling the die. And uh, let's say I'm going to count the number of threes. So I roll it once, and uh, maybe I don't get a three. So um, this ratio is 0 divided by 1. But I'm going to do it again. Well, maybe I still don't get a three. I do it again. Well, maybe this time I did get a 3. So now my ratio is 1 out of 3. So in this approach, what we're going to do is we're going to define the probability of um, an event occurring as being the limit, the limit of the ratio, uh, well, let me say the limit of the ratios, um, as I keep doing this forever and ever. Now, you might say to yourself, well, that seems like a real pain. I mean, why would I do that? Well, I wouldn't do it in this case. But let's say I want to know the probability that it's going to rain. Okay, I can't count things up. So in that case, I, I have to use this approach. Um, batting average, you know, that's giving you the chance, in some sense, of the, um, the person being able to make it to base. Same thing, you can't do this. You're, you're really doing this. So depending on the situation, um, uh, one or the other might be more appropriate. Um, this helps us understand what probability is all about. I feel like it's, it's helping us understand uh, what's going on out there in nature. In terms of doing computations, a lot of the times we're going to be doing this. All right, so um, with that, uh, I think that's probably a um, good spot uh, to stop uh, for you guys to digest. And uh, in the next lecture, we'll dig in a little bit more um, into um, uh, some more set notation as it um, uh, with respect to probability. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.